Just lift up your voices and your hands. Lift up your voices and your hands. Hallelujah. And just present yourself before the Lord. Hallelujah. Open up your heart before God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him touch you. Hallelujah. Let him touch you. Let him have his way in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just go into worship. Lord, we worship you. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I don't see any hands lifted up. This is your time to go into worship. This is your personal time to go into worship. Lord, we worship you. We thank you. We glorify you. You alone are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Come on, can you join me? I, I want to be more like you. Hallelujah. Come on, one big voice. I want to be. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Come on, can you join and say, I. I want to be more like you. Hallelujah. I want to be a vessel. I want to be a vessel you are through. I want to be more like you. Come on, let's go back to the beginning. I want to be more like you. Everyone join in. A vessel you were through. I want to be a vessel you were through. I, I, I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. Come on, lift up your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep giving him praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, hallelujah, hallelujah, it shouldn't take but a second to think of his goodness. Hallelujah. Just a month ago, I lost my hearing and I couldn't sing. So now I can tell you when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, how he opened up my ear. Hallelujah. How I can walk and not have vertigo passing out. Hallelujah. When I think of his goodness, Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, God. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. Now, everybody repeat after me, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Come on, say it again. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Come on, let's give God praise. Look at somebody and say thank you. Thank God for his mercy. That should make you want to shout right there. Y'all ain't talking. Look at somebody there and say if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? Come on, come on, lift your hands. And where would I be? Yeah, hey, 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 Woo! Can I get a witness? I'm not the preacher tonight. You may be, come on, give God praise. You don't have to go back five years. You just can go back yesterday and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And I'm so glad to be here in Jesus. Look at somebody again say, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Oh, you, you pumping me up. Now, just a little bit. If it had not been for oh, the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Oh, if it had not been for oh, the Lord on my side, tell me Church. 
if you got joy, lift your hand and say, yeah. If you got peace, lift your hand and say, yeah. If you got clapping in your hand, say, yeah, yeah. Oh. 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 You know I'm from the old school. The old folks know when they get happy like this, they say, oh, oh, oh. I can. That's the if everybody can't grow like that. That come with experience. When it come from your soul. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody said joy, joy, joy. Oh, oh, oh. Woo! Come on. Woo! Everybody say joy, 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 joy,
have a child put you on the spot yeah twice but when the doctor said no God said yes I may know that prayer changes things See, when you hear what the doctor said, then they said, what God is saying. 18 years old. I'm proud of him. And give me a little short story when the wife said, you know what? The, the doctor said that I'm pregnant. I said, how could you be pregnant? I ain't got a job. I just got laid off. And, I mean, holy hell was just in the house. 
And this is what God can do when problems come in your life. Look at somebody say, he'll work it out. Got my daughter back there. Look, ain't Lou Yasmin no more. It's Yasmin. And my grands. But I'm proud of him. Because when the doctor said, no, she can't, God said, yes, he can. Y'all ain't, y'all, y'all should be shouting on that one. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> you are overcome by your what? Testimony. And when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, you ought to just wave your hand and my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Got a little bit more. Got sick. Said I had COVID. Tried in hospital. And I ain't going to talk about that hospital, but... And Pastor Abe, they, they threw me in the room. They hardly had nothing in the room. They just threw me in the room. That's when the, that's when the enemy talks that you're going to die. Y'all ain't talking. And that's when you turn off the TV. That's all you hear. COVID, 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 COVID. God told me I'm your healer. And while I was there for five days, on oxygen but I still was telling people about Jesus God made a way said not yet that's another testimony y'all ain't talking maybe this may help you I had a light bill due over six hundred dollars And Pastor, it, it wasn't it wasn't Dominion. It was S C and G. Everybody remember S C and the G. Make a long story short, I was in line. I was trying to get that extension. Everybody say extension. Till Christmas, y'all ain't talking. It was a little short lady, and you know you're trying to be. You know you're trying to get in and you're trying to get out. Lady said, uh, Pastor Washington. I said, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, you're trying to, you know, just, no, I need to talk to you. I said, oh, Lord, all in S, C, and G, 100 people. Left. She said, how much is your bill? I said, how much, how much is the bill? She said, the Lord is saying to pay your bill. I said, the Lord is saying to pay my bill. I said, you sure the Lord talking? I said, we're here. I didn't want to say it. I said, well, here's the bill. And she, let them old mother, she got a quickening. She said, shut up. She said, where's the lady? And she said, God want me to pay his bill. I said, listen, lady, this is six. I'm going to pay it. She said, why I'm paying your bill? My daughter was sick in the hospital. And I played your song. And she got healed. I said, well, mama, what I was singing, she said, you were singing the blood will never lose its power. She said she played that song constantly in the room. And she said, whenever you see, I want to be a blessing to the man of God. I said, oh, my God. The lady, the lady was crying. I said, keep on paying. I keep crying, but pay. <laughs> And Pastor Abe, and I got to go. She said, here's another hundred dollars for lunch. Let me tell you, when God make a way, 
Y'all ain't talking. He can make a way out of no way. And you know, I was trying to be the man, you know, because we just got married and we just let the light just burn and burn. And the more you let that light burn, the more the, the bill go up. But God made a way out of no way. Maybe that may help somebody out there. Out there in TV land or stream land, wherever you are. In Jesus' name. Our pastor is going to come. Pastor Abraham Bellinger to welcome you to First Fruit Community <laughs> Church. Let's give him a hand while he comes. Listen, before I, before I come, can we praise God for Ella Washington? Listen up in this sanctified. Y'all ain't come to have church. Can we stand up praise God for Ella Washington? Yes, sir. See, we come from the churches where, you know, the, the, the service be at one level and then you was required to take it to the next. And if you didn't, you ain't getting back up behind this roster. Yeah. Amen. So all he did was put the use of what was in him this morning. Yes, we praise God for Ella Washington God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. God and, and Zion. God is so good this morning. I am trying not to act up. I don't know what y'all doing to me this morning. I'm really trying not to act up. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't come. Look at somebody say, y'all ain't come to have church. No, 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 no. Y'all ain't come to have church. Because all them testimonies, somebody should have took off running up in this. I got good traction this morning too, boy. Don't. I know I got my Stevie Wonder shades on, but I always want to come to church with some shades on. Just so I can be looking this way, but they're looking at you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even know. You ain't even know. No, I had that sinus surgery, and I didn't want to scare y'all too much. But, uh, but y'all could be seated in Jesus' name. We welcome you to First Fruits Community Church. What an honor it is to be here amongst the saints of God. Amen. Can we praise God for our first lady this morning, Lady Bellinger? Looking so beautiful in her red. I see your beauty through the shades. Y'all are going to have church. Y'all better praise him for your spouse. But I ain't got no spouse. Praise him for your future spouse. Y'all ain't come to have church. Ooh, no, 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 no. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. I ain't preaching. I ain't preaching. Mr. Dewey's got a word. My God, well, I got some fire, boy. I, ain't, I don't know what happened. I said, I told myself, all right, I had this little sinus surgery. You know, I'm going to come to church, you know, and I'm just going to sit down. And he looked at me like, mm-hmm. I was like, no, seriously, you know, Dr. said, you know, I got to chill out. Man, shoot. Honestly, I woke up this morning thinking about my father-in-law, and he was fighting cancer and a failed kidney. And he came up in this church with the cancer and with the failed kidney. And see, no, y'all ain't come to have church. Y'all. And praise God, like, hallelujah, like, what is cancer and what is a failed kidney? Now, y'all here, y'all ain't got no cancer. And y'all ain't got no failed kidney. What you doing this morning? Y'all ain't come to that church. Why don't you stand up on your feet and take, a, take another 30 seconds just in case you forgot to praise him. And give God some type of praise because it should have been. It could have been. It would have been. If the Lord was not on my side. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. We'll praise the church. Don't let me out praise you. Come on, don't let me out praise you because I will. I will. I, I will. I ain't hear nobody. I will. Ain't none of y'all running yet. Ain't none of y'all picked up the spirit of the pastor yet. Y'all got to learn to run up in the sanctified church. Hallelujah. Hey, I ain't running for show. Sure. I'm running because he saved me. I'm running because he set me free. This ain't worship music. This is our music. This ain't worship. This is praise time. You better praise them for your miracles. Come on. Oh, shut up, aha.
Back to first gear. Let's praise God and give God glory. But seriously, if you really think about it, really think about what he's doing now. Think about what he's doing. 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 Think, what he's doing. think on these things. What my Wednesday night? Think on these things. Find your calm. In Jesus' name, we love him. Quick announcements this afternoon up in Holly Hill. For those of you that can, we are going to gather with Sister Deb Rivers up at 9717 Old State Road in Holly Hill. Somebody shout Holly Hill. Holly Hill. Yeah, because she's going to get up there and let the Lord use her. That's going to be at 3 p.m. this afternoon. So those of you that can and you want to go, and trust me, I think you do, because there's a whole list of sisters about to rip loose on the devil. <laughs> Doctors and sisters and ladies and the Holy Ghost going to move through these people, even the deaconess. <laughs> Man, listen here. I think the Lord going to show out on Holly here. See, y'all can go to a country church every now and then. I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Y'all, we need to go to one of them country churches where maybe the AC half working. You got a sister in the back like that, waving a fan. <laughs> Amen. No, seriously, Sister Deb Rivers is going to be speaking. And if you can, please come. If you can't, pray for her. And we know that God will bless. All right. Listen, a couple other quick announcements. I believe on this Friday, somebody said this Friday, the ladies come together for intercessory prayer. Amen. Ladies come together and go before God and cry out until the church shake. So we got to come in here and rebuild this church. I'm serious. I want y'all to cry out and flip chairs if you have to. And kick the devil's behind. Y'all acting too sedidian, church. You got to kick his behind. I can't say what I want to say in the flesh, but you got to kick his behind. In the name of Jesus. Don't you know when you pray, devils tremble? In the, but don't pray without the name. He don't tremble at nothing else but the name of Jesus. And those that are called by his name. Amen. So the ladies come out and pray like you ain't never prayed before. Don't forget to fast this Wednesday. From 6 in the morning to 6 at night. Turn the whole plate down. Not, not just, you know, you can't just eat croutons and be like, okay, I'm fasting. Turn, turn the whole plate. Look at somebody say the whole plate. Yeah. And the whole glass of drink. We, we, we're giving up everything for the Lord. Now, if you got to take medicine and all that, I get that. Now, do that because I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a little medicine right now as I recover. But, uh. Well, all I'm saying is we got to go before God, and we got to fast. Anybody know who I'm looking at right now? Okay, I'm just wondering. This is pretty cool to shake. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm looking at some folk up here that need to fast, <laughs> which is all of us. Let's go before God, man, and let's watch God pour out his spirit. When we fast and pray, things happen. 
come together at 6.30 on Wednesday and let's go before God and cry. To, listen, we don't come out here and just get on our knees. We cry to the Lord and we let him know how much we love him and how much we care about him. And we put it all before him. And when you get up, you feel different, man. God, God begins to change things. All right, I'm really going to try to move on. A couple of things before we take announcement. This is Clergy Appreciation Month. Can we put our hands together for the clergy of First Truth Community Church? A lot of the times, this is always focused on the pastor. Amen. Of course, I'm part of the clergy as well. And I thank God for them hunting stuff you got me that first Sunday. I already done put good use to it. Got, got my deer and picked up the meat yesterday. But, um, yeah, somebody's going to be making me some venison chili, Deacon Jones. Thank you. Bless you, sir. But we have other ministers, elders in this house, and I want to really take personally the time to just celebrate them real quick this morning. So I am going to begin. I'm going to, have to take these uh, shades off so I can see. Yeah, Elder Washington, if you could come back up front. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Ella Washington this morning. First Lady, yeah, you can come help. And this is a token of our love to you um, in Jesus' name. I want you to hold tight. And I want you to stay up here. Don't go nowhere. Minister DeWeese. This is him right here. Minister J. DeWeese. Oh, man. We love you. If you could stand next to him real quick, too. We love you so much, man. Minister Scott Tucker Sr. Praise the name of Jesus. Making sure it's the right one. Oh, I love you, man. Praise God for you standing up here next to him. Oh, I'm trying to look sharp. What's up, man? I'm trying to be like you, bro. Minister Harold Hicks. Praise God. Come on up. Come on down. The price is right. Bless your soul. Love you, preacher. And uh, last but not least, Minister Chris Stover. Amen. Come on up. Now, I normally don't do this, but there's a reason why I'm doing it like this. First of all, because we appreciate y'all very much. Can somebody get a picture of us? Can I leave my shades on? Is y'all good? Watch out. We all locked and loaded. Locked and ch -ch loaded. The pastor had a dream. Blah. And God brought the team with the Steam. Steam. Yes, sir. Watch out, <laughs> all right, smile. Let's smile. Let's smile for picture. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like you say, we drop it like it's hot. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. No, 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 no. See, we usually open gifts. I want y'all to open our gifts here real quick, okay? Um, I, I, there's a reason behind this. Not just so they can see you, but so as you pull it out, we got you just a little something you can sip on some good clean water with. Uh, they're called little breeder uh, mugs or something. So you got a little filter you buy every two months uh, to keep drinking some clean water, all right? So, so you see, so you got the water. There's a purpose now. I don't just, there's water because the, we got to be washed with the water of his word. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And then the Bible talks about writing a vision and make it plain, right? So in those um, notebooks, if you open up that notebook real quick to the first page, I know, yep, but got y'all multitasking. That's good. That's what we do as preachers and ministers. We, we balance everything. But that first page is for you, you know, and that's from me to you. It's just, just individually just want to express how much I love you, man, some appreciation in there. Um, but I believe note takers are history makers, man. So that's what that represents. You know, writing a vision, making it plain, whatever God put on your heart to write down in that. Got you some pens to do that. Use all the ink as much as you possibly can. If you need more, let me know. Yeah. Amen. But I uh, just want to let y'all know that y'all are appreciated in this house, man. Not just me, not just First Lady, but I think we all uh, praise God for our, our ministers in this house. It ain't easy um, stepping into the calling of ministry. It's never easy. Being gifts to the body of Christ, it is always going to be a, a fight, you know, and we all go through stuff, but we get fought. I mean, we get fought more than you could imagine. And so um, in spite of the fighting, in spite of what's happened in our lives, and uh, no matter what the enemy tries to do, the only thing he could ever do is hinder us because the devil can't stop us. I want to let you know that, you, that even if you ever run into a small hindrance, hallelujah, that it is only that. The Apostle Paul said, I meant to come to you, but the devil hindered me, but here I am now. You know what I'm saying? So exactly where God is taking y'all is where y'all should be and where you will be. And nothing can stop that. Nothing will stop that. Your gifts make room for you. Your anointing makes the difference. Your, your skill, your wisdom, your not. Come on, church. That all of this stuff that God has placed inside of you, God put it in you. It don't matter the rejection. It don't matter the abandonment. It don't matter how people looked at you. It don't matter how people see you. It don't matter. None of that stuff matters because it's all about how God has positioned you in his body 
to facilitate the moving forward of his kingdom. So I just want to encourage you as your pastor, man, to be encouraged. Thank you all for doing what you do day in and day out. We love you so much, man. And y'all, y'all just uh, keep doing what you're doing. And, and, and let's put our hands together one more time for this amazing team. Love you, man. Love you. Love you so much. Love you so much, man. Amen. Somebody says, all for time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Love you, man. Bless you. Bless you. There's an offer time in the house of the Lord as you're standing preparing to give your tithes and your offering. Amen. It's really easy to do. We make it simple. We got envelopes in front of you if you have a tangible offering um, that you can sow into the deacon's hands on the way out um, of service today. And then if you're sowing digitally, you know how to do it. You text FFCC to the number on the screen. Amen. I'm going to ask that everybody stand up with your seed in your hand. I want y'all give, 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 as God always uses you cheerfully to give, to bless the house. And uh, I'm going to put something out there. We're approaching the end of the year, the, the um, uh, incoming of a new fiscal year, and there's some things on our plate that we want to do. Um, uh, we have a legal team that we, uh, that we uh, pay to uh, make sure all of our ducks are in order, make sure everything is solidified and, and it's time to... Uh, uh, remit a payment to them. <laughs> and how many know lawyers don't aren't cheap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we do what we do here. It's really easy. We, we don't pay them a whole lot, only a couple thousand dollars to cover us and protect us as a, as a church. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it, it, so I heard somebody say, well, you know, the church ain't never was all about that business stuff back in the days. I, I, I beg to differ, man. Even in the early church, the beginning, there was clear, clear organization. As a matter of fact, they appointed people to handle business and do these things and brought people before the board. Even Apostle Paul went before the board of apostles. And so there's always checks and balances. And so, so, we, so in your giving, I guess what I'm saying is um, if God is moving on your heart like that short woman you saw in S-C-E-N-G, yeah. to, to sow a little bit more, do that. Do that because we're going to make that payment. We're going to get the Chisholm Law Firm on top of it. And um, doing a few things to make sure we're ready to go to the next level next year. Amen. And we can't think about next year when we get there. We got to think about it now. Amen. We got a new, we already selected a new board for our church. We already uh, got some things rolling. We already had a new meeting. We already getting things, some things lined up and lined up in place and put in place. And um, so we just need your continued support both spiritually and financially. So with your seed lifted in your hand, your tithes, your offerings, uh, your sacrificial giving, uh, Father, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for each soul that is giving this morning, Lord God. For every man, woman, and child that has the spirit and cheerfulness to give, Lord, we thank you for. Father, for those of, uh, that are here and online that may want to sow, but right now they don't have the sow, we just ask that you rebuke that devourer in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that at any time they want to in the future, they will be able to give whatever they want to give. Amen. Father, I believe there's some people in here that want to give whatever they want to give. They want to give exceeding and abundantly they could ever do themselves, Lord. And so we ask that you rebuke that devil that tried to hinder them from giving into the moving forward of your kingdom. Father, we thank you for the seed sown, Lord God, and for every man, woman, and child. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church shout amen. Amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. And again, if you have a tangible gift, you can easily release that into the uh, into Deacon Jones' hands. He'll have a basket at the door at the end of our service. It is time uh, to move forward into the Word of God. Y'all ready for God's Word? Yeah. I cannot wait until Sundays come. I can't. I'll be excited. Even when I'm preaching, I'm like, Lord, you got to feed me before you feed them. You know? There's nothing better than hearing from God and His Word. Amen. And, and, and when His people come together with an, a faith and an expectation, that means God has a Word to say. And that, guess what? That word is not just for the house. It's for you individually. It's, it's going to be it's gonna mean one thing for you. It's going to mean one thing for you. It's going to mean one thing for you and one thing for me. But then collectively, it's going to speak to us all. Amen. Amen. You, could, you best be guaranteed fire is about to drop in this house. Hallelujah. Hey, where the fire extinguishers at? We are, we are up to date on that. Okay. So listen, the fire is about to drop in this house. Amen. All you got to do is look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. I'm wood. All right, at this time, Minister Dweez, come on up and drop the fire of the Lord into the hearts of the people of God. And let us all receive the man of God with a hearty amen in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God good. Someone said, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Oh, praise the Lord, oh ye people. Hallelujah. 
It's great to see you, First Fruits, and visiting uh, members, if you're here, those that visited today. We just thank God for you being here today. And uh, I'm not going to say my word is a shouting word. You had the chance to cut your step. So if you reneged, uh, you're still going to have a chance if, before we leave. But I believe that my word is a really uh, a thinking word today. It's something to grab your hearts, your souls. And so before I begin with my, uh, with my teaching on today, I want to give reverence. First of all, I give honor to my God and my Savior. Hallelujah for allowing me to be able. You know, when you, you bought that song, well, I often say it, but I, I really take it serious when I think of the goodness of Jesus when I think about where I could have been and where I am today, and those of you that are here today, you didn't see me in 2017. My pastor family, church family that was here, they saw what I, my struggles. But look at God today. If you mess with me too much, I'll follow Pastor Abel around this church and run a circle around you. I, am, I just give God praise for the opportunity to be able to give him praise. So I thank God for being for me being here today. And I reverence and I recognize our pastor and lady, Pastor Abraham, Lady Ty. We thank you. Thank you for your love. And I know we're family, but I reverence you in the place that God has placed you for the ministry of this temple. And I'm calling a temple today, so I give God praise for you. And I want to give God a special praise for this foxy lady that's standing over here, right, sitting over here right now. Could you please stand up? Could you please stand up? I give God praise for my right hand. My, this, is, this is my jewel. And I'm not saying it just because you're sitting here. I really, really mean it. This is not a joke. The Lord has blessed me with this jewel for 32 years, and I just give God praise. The reason why I give God praise, let me tell you something. I often talk about my situation with being in ICU for 65 years, 65 days. Thank you, Jesus. I'm taking some crazy medicine, too. 65 days. I often talk about how the Lord allowed me to get through, and I talk about my testimony. Of course, I could not have done that without my wife being there. And let me tell you, this is a strong lady. Because while I was in ICU, she made sure that everything ran as according as it's supposed to be, took care of all of the, make sure the bills were taken care of, made sure that our young whoever he was at the time, <laughs> Justin was trying to act up in ninth grade, but she made sure that he stayed on track and she kept everything together so that I didn't have to worry. Amen. That was my main problem at the first 10 days is worrying about everything. How is this going to be done and how is that going to be done? And once I put it in God's hands, my wife did. I don't know how she did it. I know it was nobody but God, but I thank God in a special way. You know, on a serious note, she could have left me. Let's keep this real. People, when they go through those kind of struggles, they don't, they don't stay together. So I thank God for my right, my right hand and my wife, my jewel. I give God praise for you. Thank God for you. And we thank God for you, Justin, too. We got a story to tell, too. I've been hearing all of these different stories, but we got a story to tell. And when the time is right, the Lord's going to open up that door. And I know it's going to be a blessing to the people of God. Amen. So could you please stand Stand at this time. Please stand. <laughs> I heard somebody say no. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. You know, Pastor El I'm Elder Tony, you are something else, man. I tell you, I really, I thank God for you. I've learned who you were at a young age. And, man, I've seen God do some serious things through you. And you got, you got the church on a roll today. That is so awesome. I am so glad that you are a part of this ministry with us, and I just pray that you and Sister Creole, I pray that God continues to bless you as he's doing already at this time. Thank God for you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you, God. 
Hallelujah. I praise you because I know that you're going to speak through me today and you're going to allow your word to manifest and that the people of God is going to receive it. And I give you praise just for this opportunity. Hallelujah. And I pray that you continue to bless your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you have your word, or if you don't have it, it's going to be uh, resonated across the screen. Uh, turn with me. I have several scriptures, but I'm going to start with John, the eighth chapter, uh, starting at the seventh verse. John, the eighth chapter, starting at the seventh verse. And we're going to read through the eleventh verse. Amen? Amen. So, when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, which is wrongdoing, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest or the first, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. So the next scripture, turn to John 9, and we're going to be reading 1 through 3, and then we'll read 6 through 7. John 9, 1 through 3, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? And he was born blind. Then Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. 6 through 7, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man which the, with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Amen. So the subject or the thought that I have for you on today is God loves you flaws and all. all right. I want you to say that. God loves you. Flaws and all. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to start out with a little uh, fairy tale. Those, those of you may know about uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Amen. So you, you're, familiar about the, you're familiar with the famous mirror, right? And the famous quote or question was, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And the magic mirror was owned by who? The, the queen, right? The wicked queen. All right? She lived every day, and she was okay as long as that mirror continued to let her know that she was the fairest of them all. Well, one day, <laughs> one day the mirror decides to let the queen know that uh, you are no longer the fairest of them all. There is now competition. And the queen was livid. She shifted how she thought. She decided that she was going to take action. And she was going to kill that competition. That was her goal. So this tells me that, uh, and I'm pretty sure you would agree with this, that the queen had her hopes and her intentions in the wrong, pray, wrong place. Amen? So... My question to you, as we thought about that little scenario, when you look in the mirror, and this is personal for all of us to take in, all of us take this opportunity. When you look in the mirror, what is it that you see? Or what is it that you hear? So we could use that as a figurative kind of, uh, you know, intent or cognot cognotation it doesn't matter or you can take the time to look in the mirror but what is it that you see or what is it that you hear do you see your downfalls do you see 
the embarrassing things that you have done or are doing? Do you see the things that things may have happened around you in your youth? Are you looking at that? Are you looking at your low self-esteem? Well, I just wanted to let you all know today that we are living in reality. We are not living in a fairy tale. Amen? And that none of us, just like Jesus reminded the Pharisees and the scribes, none of us are perfect. And we have all had flaws. And some of us still have flaws even today. Amen? Uh, none of us can stand here. Nobody can stand here. I'm trying to build this up for you. Nobody can stand here and say that they have dotted every I or crossed every T. Amen? There's nobody in here that even if you were brought up in a fairly well family environment, even if you had, you know, good security, it doesn't matter. We're still not perfect. And Pastor reminded us on at Bible study that there is only one perfect individual, one perfect man that walked this earth. And who's that? Jesus. Amen. He walked this earth without sin. Uh, he was tempted now. He was the example. He was tempted on every side. But he only had one thing to fulfill and that nobody else was able to fulfill and that he was going to be the one who stood in the gap for every one of us sacrifice his life so that we can live freely and now be able to live in eternity. Amen? So the point I'm trying to make here is that we should thank God that he loves us and that he sees us for who we are truly. And yes, we have those flaws. Yes, we have those uh, imperfections. But we should not allow those flaws and those imperfections to stop us from receiving what God has purposed in our life. Amen? Amen. So say to yourself, take this, this quote and say to yourself, God loves me, God loves me. flaws and all. Flaws. Amen. Amen. So the two points, there are two points that I want to pull out of this message. The first point is, I said earlier, shifting your thoughts. I used the scenario of the queen and the mirror because in my mind, it shows how people can get caught up on what other people said about them. Amen? That's easy to do. The magic mirror represents uh, what others are saying about you. And it, the intention is that uh, it, it, in, it implies the, ex the example of perfection. The queen indicates how we could react based on what other people are saying about us. That's what the queen is implying. So let's take a look at the woman that, uh, that Jesus told to, to, to leave. Let's take a look at this woman. We don't know much about the woman. We don't know whether or not, we don't know her name. We don't know who, where she came from. One thing we do know is that this woman committed adultery. Amen? It was very clear. She committed adultery. We know that. And these scribes and these Pharisees had intentions to stone this woman based on her flaw. And they came to Jesus because what they were trying to do was find out how Jesus was going to react so they can find fault in him. But thank God, Jesus, who was God in the flesh, had enough wisdom and understanding to be able to give them a sense of their own purpose and their own issues. And he told them, who is without sin, cast the first stone. So it may have been something that he wrote on the ground, or it may have been something that transitioned after he said it, but there was no one left to cast a stone at that lady. So let's look at this. Jesus looked up at the lady at the woman and said, where are thou, where are your accusers? No one was left. So she said, sir, there is none, Lord. There's no accuser. Nobody is there, Lord. So <laughs> Jesus told her, well, there's no one here to accuse you. And I'm not here to accuse you. You are free to go. But what did he tell her? To sin no more. 
Amen. So I just, the woman, she, she, the woman, she, she really had nothing to worry about. After, after Jesus, after he said what he said, she had nothing to worry about. <clears throat> Sarah, excuse me. There are so many people that instead of them taking the opportunity to be forgiven with whatever is going on in their life, they are consistently battering themselves, keeping themselves down because of the sin. And don't even realize that God is here to forgive you Amen. for your wrongdoing. Amen. That woman didn't worry. Did she sin? Yes. But when he told her to leave and sin no more, she got up out of Dodge. She didn't waste time. So the second point I want to bring to your attention is taking action. All right. The action from Jesus to the woman was you are free to go. Sin no more. So I want you to receive what God is saying to you. God loves you, even through your flaws. And I want everyone, I know that I'm reading and I'm getting my information, but I really want you to take this personally because I believe that there are so many of us that are sitting in this place just as that woman, but we are contemplating and we are battling you know, am I forgiven? Can I be forgiven for this wrongdoing? Or can I be forgiven for this thing that keeps hindering me? Am I worthy to be forgiven? And my answer to you today is yes, you are. You are worthy to be forgiven. So instead of sitting around here dwelling on whatever it is, and it's not up to me to know, like you looking in the mirror, you looking in the mirror of your souls, instead of you worrying about what that is, why don't you receive what God sees about you? Why don't you receive what he is saying about you? Let's digest the, 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 the text of the blind man. Now, Jesus made it very clear that the blind man did not sin. Neither did his parents. But that was a discussion that they were having concerning him. Didn't have anything to do with him sinning, but based on the fact that he had a flaw, based on the fact that he had an imperfection, did he sin or was it his parents' sin uh, that caused the sin to allow him to be blind? But Jesus reminded them, no, he didn't sin. He didn't do anything wrong, but that God be glorified through that per imperfection. So, so to you, to you, maybe you have had a situation in your youth or that you've had times where there were things that didn't go exactly right. And people, I heard some of people, <laughs> people would say stuff like, well, she's an alcoholic because of her mom and her dad. Or he's loony because it runs in their family. And you, re you may have received that. You may have received that. I wanted to kind of give a quick lesson to you that have young kids, young children today. This is definitely why it's important as parents that we watch what we say over our children. We watch what we speak over our children. Because believe me when I'm telling you, it is something that will resonate into their spirit man and into their mind and into their hearts and then the next thing you know they start believing what you're saying so we have to make sure that we don't do that and I'm sure that there may be some today that have had that if I gave you an opportunity to testify there are some of you today that may have had that where people have spoke over you and said that you would never be nothing and said that you won't be able to be successful and that ba you're battling that. But I'm here to tell you today that God loves you, flaws and all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, this man that was blind, uh, Jesus made sure that he, that he ministered yeah. to that man. Yeah. 
Now, if that man did not believe Jesus, and if he didn't have faith, after Jesus put clay in his eyes and told him to wash his eyes out at the pool, if he didn't believe him, he would have lost out on the blessing that God had in store for him. So this is about your thoughts. This is about what you're thinking about in your life. And you're going to have to believe that God's got you in spite of it. And because he believed that God had him in spite of it, he went and he took action and he was healed from blindness. Amen. Amen. So, shift your thoughts and take action. Shifting your thoughts. We know that the enemy uses negativity, uh, negative thoughts as his advantage. Because he know that if he can get you to think negative and bad about yourself and think negative about what God has in store for you and think negative about where you're going in life, he's pretty much got you. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. To you young people, to you young people, the devil is a liar. Don't allow the enemy to take your mind and make you think that you don't have a chance to be holy, to live according to his will. Don't allow the enemy to take your mind. You know, a lot of people look at Minister Jay, and looks like I grew up, <laughs> I'm just going to say what people, tell, what people tell me. Looks like I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth. But... I got a few people in here that know that's not true. Like my sister over here, Sister Geneva, she knew me in my youth. And I'm not going to be the one to get up and tell you everything that has transpired in my youth. But I will tell you this. I did not grow up with a silver spoon. I have had some nights that if I really went into the deep, situations you probably would fall out some of the things that I experienced with family with family now I'm, I'm not talking about people outside I'm talking about with family some of the things that I had to endure I know that if it wasn't for God I know that if it wasn't for God I would have lost my mind I know it but what I'm trying to say today, and yes, I've had some flaws. I've had some fights because of it. But what I want you to know today is that even in my youth, when God saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost, you thought it got better? It didn't get better. I was in denial. I said, oh, I got the Holy Ghost. It's going to be great. No. It, it's almost like it came seven times hotter. And it affected me. It affected what I thought about me. It affected how I received what people thought about me. And it affected, it affected me getting up and speaking in front of people because I didn't feel that I had anything to say. But you know what my action was? I realized that if I stayed there, I would not be able to do anything that I believe that God wanted me to do. So I took action. I allowed myself to be around people that were going to pour into me with good seed and see my worth, see what I had in me. And they were able to pull it out of me. I knew I had great opportunities to be able to use gift mus musically. I already knew that. But I needed to be around people that really could pour it out of me. Because when people would tell me that I played or that I sounded really well, I would have doubt. And I would say, are you for real? Is this real? Are you, are you sh Really? You know, I would question it. I wouldn't receive it. But once I got around people that really were able to pour into me and, and pour good seed into me, I realized that it's God that anointed me to be able to sing and play with anointing. And I didn't take his credit, but I also realized that he gave it to me to use for the kingdom. 
And so I became confident in that matter. When people would say certain things, one of the problems that I had was if you looked at me wrong, I thought you had a problem with me. And that, that sounds simple, doesn't it? How many of you had that same problem or may still have it? If you looked at me wrong, I'm thinking, oh, God, what did I do? And I would be worrying about that all day long because of my perception. That's what it is about. My perception. I'm thanking Jesus because I learned that perception is my reality, but that doesn't mean that it's true. And when I got that, I started realizing, you know what? That person may just be looking at, Sister Cree may just be looking at me, Creola may just be looking at me, and she's thinking about something going on in her personal life. Or something is probably going on with her eyes. I don't know. The, how would I find out? I would go to Sister Creola, and I would say, Sister Creola, is everything okay? Is, you know, it, is there something wrong? And then that cuts out my perception. That cuts out the guessing. I thank God for that because I really had a problem with that. I really did. Now, the speaking part, if you went back 20 years from now, I did a saxophone recording. I recorded a live uh, saxophone recording 20 years from now. Speaking, if you told me I had to do a lot of speaking, I would have been so nervous. I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have had a word to say, but it's, it just... The speaking side was so fearful to me. And I, later time, we, we've talked about that. <clears throat> it, it was so clear, it was so fearful to me to get up in front of people and talk. Because of my lack of self-esteem, I felt I didn't have anything to say. But God dealt with me with that too. God gave me some, some, something to talk about. <laughs> I'd, I'd say a little bit more than that. And he gave me some experiences that I know some people would not have been able to endure. And I realized that the enemy knew this. He knew that if he can keep me shut, and if he can keep me low, and if he can keep my what God has for me quiet to be able to bless the kingdom God, he realized that he had, he had, he had the advantage. But thank God that I realize, and this is still something, I'm trying to get a point here, this is still something that I have to continue to remind myself because I know the enemy wants to shut me up. His job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If he can steal what God has for you, if he can kill, kill everything in you that, that, that means something to you, and if he can destroy you, then he's got you. What you going to do about it? Are you going to let the enemy kill you? Are you going to let the enemy steal from you what God has for you? Whatever flaw, this is the, this is the awesome part about that message when he told the disciples about the blind man. Whatever flaw that you have, God wants to take that flaw and turn it around and make it for your good and make it for the kingdom of God. That's your story. That's your story. I, don't, I didn't experience what you experienced, Sister Tia, and you didn't experience what I experienced. But now we have an opportunity because we know that God delivered us to tell a story to someone else that may be experiencing the same thing. Amen? So, we need to ask this question. What does God see in you? What does God see in me? He doesn't see the flaws. You need to know that. He doesn't see the flaws. What God sees in you is that you are victorious. What God sees in you is that you are overcomers. What God sees in you is not that you are just a conqueror, but you are more than a conqueror. 
God wants you to receive what he sees in you. Amen. Amen. David spoke these words in Psalm 139 and 14. That we are fearfully and that we are wonderfully made and marvelous are the works of God. Amen. And fearfully translated from the Hebrew means great reverence, heartfelt interest, and with respect. Wonderfully, when translated with the Hebrew means unique and set apart. Amen. You are unique. Amen. You are unique. Right. You are set apart, Brother Rahim. Amen. You are unique. Amen. You are unique. Amen. You are unique. Amen. Your situation is not just for you. Your situation is for everyone else to receive. Yes, yes. Your experiences Amen. is what everyone else to receive. That's right, that's right. You cannot keep it to yourself. Because if you keep it to yourself, then you are allowing the enemy to get victory over what God has for you. Amen? One last thing I wanted to, to express is that our God is a forgiving God. And because he loves us so much, because we can talk about these flaws and we can continue to talk about, well, God is a forgiving God. Yeah, flaws and all. But he wants us to repent. He wants us to shift. He wants us to think more highly of ourselves. He wants us to take the step to move, move forward, not stay in the same area and dwell on the flaws, but, but allow now the flaws to become a testimony for the kingdom of God. Amen? So to those who feel that you can't change your life because of who you became or what you've done, I just want you to know that this isn't true. It's not true. There is no fault too hard for our God to solve. And to fix no fault the question is are you willing to receive that today are you willing to receive this today so now I said I know this wasn't a shouting message it wasn't a cut and step message but it's a it's a message for you to personally think about in your heart in your soul as we transition and as we pivot as we shift the direction that God wants us to go, take that fault and make it for God's glory. Amen. Take that imperfection and make it for God's glory. There was a song that I remembered singing in my youth. When I first got the song, I didn't really understand what the, the words, I couldn't really feel the words. But then there came a time when I realized that if it wasn't for God, I would not be there, would not be able to get through. And that little song says, God, God is, he is my protection, Whoa. God is, he's my all head, my all, oh, God, God is, he's my today. And my tomorrow, Whoa. God, God, God is, He's my own and all. And that song, that song got me through a lot of those times when I felt like I couldn't make it. When I felt like I wanted to give in because I didn't feel that I deserved to go through those times that I went through. 
But that song, God, God is, he's my joy in time of sorrow, oh, God, I said God, God is. He's my all and my all. Oh, 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 oh. God, God is. He is my refuge in time of trial. God, God, God is, hallelujah, my own, my own, hallelujah, why don't you stand up and let's just give God a praise, hallelujah, come on, let's give him a praise. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised. He promised to lead me, never to leave. Never. Never, never fall short. I've got to fast and pray. God is your all. Why don't you praise him for it? Yeah. Why don't you let him know you're grateful? Yeah. Hallelujah. God is God is my Lord. I can't make it without you. I can't make it without you. I need you every day. Every day and hour.
my trials. Yeah. I said he's my all. Yeah. Through my hard times. Yes, he is. He's my all. He's all. Through all of the flaws. Yes. Through all of the imperfections. He is. He's my all. My all. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we thank you for this word today. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God. And we pray, Lord God, that the word is received. Hallelujah. Lord, you know about the situations. You know what they need, God. Lord, we pray that you lift them up in their time of trouble. In the name of Jesus, give them the joy that, that they need. Give them the peace that they need. Hallelujah. We come against low self-esteem. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I said we come against low self-esteem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You said we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. You said we are victorious. Hallelujah. You said that we can do all things through you that strengthens us lord we ask right now that your sin of strength their way send strength in the name of jesus send healing in the name of jesus cast down everything that's trying to get them cast it down we come against every trial in the name of jesus hallelujah we come against every chain chains are broken in the name of jesus yes it is there's power in the name i said there's power in the name of power in the name of jesus nothing too hard for my god hallelujah we praise you god and we count it done and it is so in jesus name hallelujah put your hands together and give god a praise hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Hallelujah. at this time, we're going to turn this part of the service Hallelujah. back into the hands of our pastor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep it right there. Let's keep it right there. Let's keep it right there. Beautiful. Flaws and all, y'all. Flaws and all. Flaws and all, y'all. Flaws and all. Flaws and all, y'all. Flaws and all. He loves you. You know how much he loves you? Hallelujah. The, the preacher expounded very articulately as to how much he loves us. And um, as Minister DeWeese was giving us this fiery word today, I began to think about one of the greatest fights we have, and that's against our identity. The greatest fight the enemy has against you this morning is against your what? Yeah, because he doesn't want you to see yourself as God sees you. Come on, Minister Deweese. That was, that was deep right there. He, the enemy does not want you to be able to clearly see who you are in God. And now, you know what? I always begin to wonder, why doesn't he want us to know? I think it deals with a couple things. Lucifer regrets his fall. But it was so great that he cannot return to who he knew he was created to be. And the difference between him and us is we have redemption. That though our sins were as were, were, were as were as scarlet, they, they were red as scarlet. God has made them whiter than snow, and, and he does not remember our sins anymore. Woo! When you walk like that, come on, y'all. When you walk in, man, this man preached this morning. When you, when you walk in your identity, yeah, we still are being perfected like he preached. I ain't preaching behind him. I just want to make sure you catch this. We're being perfected. In God's eyes, we are perfect. Wait, hold up. That's against the grain of everything, right? Because good... God knows good and well we ain't perfect, but he sees us as what we shall be already because he's not bound by time, space, or matter. So he don't see you in your flaws. He knows your flaws, 
But he don't, he don't, he don't spend time there because he already knows how you're going to come out in the way he's going to bring you. Even when we don't know. So any time the enemy comes against your identity, you have to fight back. What do you fight back with? You fight back with the fact that Jesus Christ has placed the righteousness of God on us. Understand this, that Jesus is always in good favor with the Father. Think identity for a minute. This was rich. Jesus is always, he's always at good favor with the Father because he was the perfect man. Perfect sacrifice, right? He's at the high priest's role at the right hand of authority of the throne of grace, right? He is what the Bible tells us, the intercessor between us and God. Though we know Jesus is God in the flesh in his role as the son of God, the only begotten son of God, he stands as an intercessor between the Father and us. Watch this. And so, and so if we have to go through him, then we go through his standing. Which means if he's righteous, we're righteous. When we look in the mirror, we see flaws, yes. And we should ignore, we should never ignore them, but we should ask God to help us work on them. But what, what, what we got to understand, the bigger picture, is that God does not see us like that. If we're under his blood, if we're coming through his son, he sees us as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's why we're buried with him in baptism. Woo! That's why we rise with him with the Holy Spirit on the inside. To walk in the new life. That's why we have repentance that caused us to die from our old man. He made us new, y'all. And so I know we got flaws. Woo, Jesus, this was a good message. When you think about what this man of God preached. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Dewey's. When you think about flaws and all, it really just resonates and magnifies the graciousness and the love that our Father has for us this morning. And so I would like to pitch unto any one of you place before your throne where your soul lies and if you want to step into that deep grace this morning that can be your opportunity right now to say Lord here I am flaws and all I want to, I want to be saved Lord they talking about God don't look at us this way I've been looking at myself this way for a long time you see you're looking at your past trauma as if that's who you are not abandoned the Bible says you're adopted Woo! oh God hallelujah you're not rejected you're accepted you're not abused you're used of God you're not destroyed just cast down a little bit you are not your past in Jesus all things are new tell you something. God's about to do a new thing in your life. I know the new year is coming up, but right now is your new year. The Jewish people, they're already in their new year. Why not enter into a new year now? Looking at who you are and what God's going to do through your life. Y'all, do you know how valuable you are? This message was such a sound message of value of who you are, that God loved us so much, so much. He didn't let any of them flaws get between us and him. None of them. If that was the case, none of us would even be here. Nothing. Nothing has gotten in between us. That's why I took off my glasses. Flaws and all. You know what's really funny? I think this is so interesting because I didn't really know the depth of what he was going to preach, right? And so when I went through my surgery Thursday... You know, I, I knew there was going to be bruising, but I know it was going to look like I got in a fight with Mike Tyson, you know? <laughs> Good luck. What in the world? But I was, what, this is so funny. I was out in public doing things. I was looking down. Like I wasn't looking nobody in the face. Because the bruise on my face. I was thinking like, man, it's just a bruise. And I felt ashamed because I had a bruise. 
And it made me, before you even preach this message, begin to think about the greatest fight that we're all going through is our image and who we are, our identity. God don't want you looking down. You're a son of the Most High God. You're a daughter of the King. He wants, he, wants you to lift, he wants you to lift up your head in His presence and not be ashamed of who you are. God, God has made you who you are. You are valued. As a matter of fact, I think it's the flaws. I think it's the cracks and the pots that God puts together that really makes us unique. Nobody wants to look like nobody else. No way. You are unique to God. Don't let nobody think or make you feel like you're any different, especially not the devil. You are so unique to God that nobody got your same fingerprint. Nobody got your same gifts. Nobody can do what you do in this earth and what God has assigned you to do in this earth, in this generation, in this time. Nobody. Don't let nobody make you think you common. You are not common. You are peculiar. That's why you don't fit in. You're not supposed to. That's why you don't fit in. You ain't supposed to. Mm. Mm. I was riding back from Greensboro yesterday. And that thought came in my mind that we're just pilgrims passing through here. And you can see that two ways. Oh, it's me. I ain't got nobody. Just passing through here. Or you can see it as, you know what? I'm part of a people that's going somewhere. And I'm trying to find some others to go with me. I was looking at empty seats this morning, praising God for all of you, and looking at the empty seats like, I wonder who we're going to bring next Sunday. I wonder who we're going to gather together this week with. I wonder who we're going to encourage. Somebody that may not even know the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that may not really understand who they are yet. We know who we are. We may not be where we want to be, but we know who we are. So don't let nothing stop you from grabbing somebody else. Somebody else is wondering, where, where do they fit in? Who am I? People are asking that question every day. Why am I alive? Why do I exist? God has purpose. God has plans for us. Anybody, anybody love the word this morning? Oh, my God. That's the stuff that if you grab hold to, you grow. Yeah. Yeah, we shout in the beginning and then we soak it up in, <laughs> during service. But will there be anybody who want to be saved? You want to be saved? You want to give your life to the Lord? You want to get set free from your sins and shame? Or maybe you messed up or whatever. You just want prayer to be restored or you want to be baptized in Jesus' name. We got a nice warm pool next door. And we'll baptize you in Jesus' name that you can be buried with him through baptism. Because listen, one thing I do know we are is we're people of the name. Yes, Lord. Listen, we're people of the name. We're people that belong to Jesus. So if you haven't been buried in his name yet, why don't you go ahead and receive your identity this morning and come up front and we'll baptize you in Jesus' name. You want to be baptized, daughter? Come on up front. Amen. That's why you're here. Listen. We, man. That's why you're here, baby. The Lord. <laughs> ah, was it the self-esteem thing for you? Yeah, I know he was speaking. I knew the Thank Lord you, was speaking Jesus. to you. Not him. But I knew the Lord was speaking to you about, about the self-esteem thing. I saw it. You know who you are. And now watch this. When you're buried in Jesus' name, you're, you become a person, a person, a woman that belongs to Jesus. His name is called over you through baptism. And what happens is when we, we, when we invoke the name of our God, Jesus Christ, over you through baptism, you are ushered out of this world into his presence to walk in it all the days of your life, daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to receive. They just do that just in case. Yeah, yeah, it's all good, bro. It's all good. And so, daughter, he's going to take you. I don't know what you've been through. The Lord says, because of your brokenness, I'm going to show you what it means to be whole. Because part of what you're put here on this earth to do is to help others become whole. Right? But we can't make others whole until we're first whole. So God sent you here this morning. This is your first time here? Sent you from Columbia? Yeah, where do you live? Where? You in Benedict College, or where you from? The Bahamas. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah, man. It's beautiful. 
Yeah. So he brought you. Look how God do this. All the way from the Bahamas to Benedict to here at First Fruits. Because he has newness for your life, baby. He's about to make your, you whole. From family, trauma, from, every, from all of your history and your past. Everything is being severed this morning. From your past. Daughter, you shall be made whole. Can I pray for you? Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, this is your precious daughter. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, our God. Hallelujah. She has turned her heart to thee, saying, I want nothing but you, Lord God. Turning turning with repentance, Lord God, of her sins, Lord. Turning to you to be born again, to be baptized into your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, hallelujah, as we prepare to bury her in your name, as she rises to walk in a new life, Lord. We know the enemy will try to again attack her identity. But, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I declare a wholeness be upon her. Hallelujah. I declare a miraculous healing be upon her. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, by the power of the invested word of God in me, hallelujah, and by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the name of Jesus, I declare over her life a new beginning. Hallelujah. All things are new, Lord God. She did not only come here to be educated, Lord God, hallelujah, from a secular t- standpoint, but Lord our God, you led her here, hallelujah, that she might receive, hallelujah, what the doctors cannot give her, hallelujah, what the educators cannot pour into her, Lord, hallelujah, but she shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon her, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I declare and decree over her life, Lord God, the power, the presence of God be in her, Lord God, hallelujah, and that you will use her, that you will heal her, that you will make her whole, that she will be able to minister to those that are broken just like her. That one day when she tells her story, when she writes her story, when she writes her story, Shema, when she writes and tells her story, Lord God, that she will minister wholeness unto others as well. Lord, an acceleration I see. Hallelujah to her purpose. That your name might be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. What's your name, daughter? Sky? Sky? That's beautiful. I love you. I'm Pastor Bellinger. That's Lady Bellinger. The ladies are going to take you next door to prepare you for baptism in Jesus' name. Ain't that good, y'all? God is good. I wouldn't miss this for nothing. Wouldn't miss this for nothing. Wouldn't miss this for nothing. Wouldn't miss this for nothing.